We're so excited to have Scott Wise, the president and CEO of Pots and Pans Production, the parent management company of Scott, Scotty's Brewhouse and Three Wise Men Brewing Company. Scotty, as he's dubbed by his late grandfather, uh, is a family man married to his wife, Amy, of 15 years. Uh, their family includes four children, Slater, twins, Lincoln and Vaughn, and Ivy. An avid exercise enthusiast, enthusiast Scott also enjoys spending time with immediate and extended family. Um, and attending sporting events, travel, reading, and always striving to better himself. Scotty is no, well known as a community philanthropist, consistently committing time, his time and effort along with monetary and food donations to causes in every city in which his restaurants reside. Uh, he is a firm believer in reaching back and offering a hand whenever and wherever is possible and needed. Scotty knows that in life, it's not just his restaurants, that it takes everyone to working together to be successful. I personally have been blessed with his friendship for over the last six years. Uh, the last time he headlined, Sparks uh, created an attendance record, and we have, we have set an attendance record for uh, Sparks at Morty's tonight, so please help me welcome Mr. Scott Wise to the Sparks. And it burns, 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 the ring of fire. So I'm uh, I'm at 80 percent right now. This my voice is not typically like this. I uh, I've got four petri dishes for children that decided to infect me with some Zika combines with some kind of virus that. So I was. Have you seen the? the has anybody seen Blue Man Group before? So front row. You're either you could be Green Man Group tonight or Brown Man Group. We'll we'll see. I I think I'm done with all that. I, I gave, we gave a call to Chris this morning at. 7 a.m. or I gave him a text and said, dude, I've been puking all night. I don't know if I can do this. But I'm here. I'm here. I didn't put in my contacts or take off my pajamas till about an hour ago, but I'm here. So when Chris came to me and asked me to do this, uh, I, I've talked once before with Sparks, and, and I really enjoy it. I like getting in front of people and talking. Uh, it's, it's truly, it, 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 my, obviously, my core passion is my restaurant. I love, I love my industry that I'm in. Um, but beyond that, things have changed my life and shaped my life, and I think we all have that. We all carry baggage, and so I'm going to talk a little bit about that, talk about my baggage. I'm not going to talk about your baggage. That's for you to decide, but I think those kind of things really shape who you are, right? Those are the things that are your character builder moments, and so I've talked a lot of times when I, when I get on stage, and I'll talk about, I, I, I had a brain infection about five years ago, and came very close to death. Um, I, I'm not going to, you, you'd have to come to another speech, another talk to hear that. I'm not going to, that story I'm not going to do tonight. But that thing, that thing that I went through, it sucked. It was horrible. But it shaped who I've become. It completely revised my thinking personally and professionally in my company. And, I, and I'm very thankful for, for it. I was, this thing on my arm, I was baptized after I went through that. Because I, I, I felt like I was given a second chance. And I wanted to use that for positivity and good in our world. And so I've changed my entire thinking with my company. I've changed my entire thinking with, with what I do at home and being home with my kids. And it's, and it's reshaped my life. So I'm not going to talk about that story because it's a, it's a really good one. But we're, we're gonna, I'm going to save that for another time. Chris wanted me to talk about something that you've never heard before. So, of course, we've talked about drug dealing tonight. And we've talked about life hacks which were great. You guys were awesome, by the way. G give them a round of applause because they were both awesome. So you're now looking at the screen at something that sounds really, really weird. And I'm going to get to that in a second, but I truly, I don't do it all the time. But especially at night, I sit down to pee. So you know me as this guy, this guy right here or this guy up here on the screen. That, But I think all of us have a little bit of, a, of some kind of curtain that we, we reside behind, right? I mean, I'm not going to I'll, I'll talk on Twitter and I'll say the things that I shouldn't say and I'm the guy that has to go to HR every Monday morning and I have to talk to my lawyer every Tuesday morning and but I don't get I, I the, the the stuff that I send out even on that platform is filtered. It might not seem like it for those that follow. And and if you do follow, it's usually the stuff that gets me in trouble is from Friday at around nine o'clock at night when I've had my third beer through sometime around Sunday morning. Um but even those things that I say there are filtered, right? I, I know I'm, I'm smart enough to know even when I'm drinking to not say something that's too over the top. We live in this society now where we judge everything that everybody is saying and doing. And, and we, and we want to shape it and, and see it a, a five different ways to make sure that they're saying what, they're really, what, they were, what, what was really coming out of their mouth. So the, the curtain that I've lived behind, I'll start with back when I was a uh, senior in high school. I had... Um, 
anorexia. I didn't know it at the time, but I was anorexic. I would not eat. I uh, would have a bagel once every couple days, and and it was mostly because I mean when I look back at it now, I know I was a, just a chubby kid growing up. I was always the fat kid. I didn't hit puberty puberty till I was like a junior in high school. So all these other kids are, you know, big puffy hair under their armpits, and I'm sitting here in the you know corner of the locker room, like not trying to let anybody see me dress. And so I was chubby, and I decided I was going to get skinny. I was going to be like all those cool jocks that all looked great and ripped up. And so, you know, of course I didn't go to the gym to do that. I, I just decided to stop eating. I was a swimmer at the time as well, and so I was swimming twice a day. I swam in college my freshman year. I went to DePaul uh, University, with DePaul with a W. And I would swim in the morning at 5 a.m. I would go to the gym, and I would run at noon, and then I'd have practice at night for another two hours. This front, I was the same height that I was then. I'm six foot now. I mean, I'm, I, I'm 180, 180 pounds right now, and my f freshman year in college, I got down to 130, and I still thought I was fat. It was tough. It was, a, uh, it was an experience that I, I look back at, and I know I'm thankful for having two incredible parents that said, if you, <laughs> if you don't stop eating, we're going to stop paying for your college. It was really, that was a kind of an easy decision for me to say, okay, i gotta, I got to figure out a way to get out of this. And so slowly, I did. Slowly, I kind of changed those habits. The second thing that I've, and, I, and I've talked about the brain infection, it looks like God's like throwing a lot of stuff at me, right? And, I, and, and he has, but it's okay. I'm okay with it because I think that's what's made me, in my opinion, a pretty good person today. So about 10 years ago, I had my, uh, my retina detached. Has anybody had a retina detachment in the room? Oh, look at that. Hot damn. So you guys know what I'm talking about. You might have even used one of these chairs before, and that's not me in that chair. Uh, when Bruce put this package together for me tonight, uh, he said, I said, find a picture of a retina detachment. And he goes, dude, you kind of should have, you should have warned me before you, before you had me searching, searching Google images for that shit. So, and it was a pretty devastating experience. I was, uh, I remember the day it happened, I was working in Muncie and my, just, I thought my contact was blurry and I kept trying to clean it and then I'd, so later I got to the doctor, I went to my retina specialist that, that day and he stuck a giant needle in my eye. I'm watching this needle like come in my eye. That doesn't fix it. So then we go to have surgery and so the, this chair that they built is a way for you to talk to people. There's a mirror underneath it. So I had, you had to keep your head down, I did for uh, I believe 15 days. Even at night I had to sleep and I had to rest my head off the end of the bed and sleep that way. So I would look, I, I watched, uh, I think at the time, Lost might have been my movie. So I was binge watching, Lo I had my lap, this was before I think even, I didn't even have an iPad at the time, so I'm just flipping my laptop down and trying to watch a movie while my wife is sleeping. It was a, it was pretty horrible. It was a bad, it was a very bad experience. Um, even today, it's not, you know, it doesn't go back to normal. I've got a, what they call a buckle around my eye that keeps my eye in a certain shape. A lot of times you'll think I'm looking at you and I'm only looking at you. And so my eyes are a fucking mess. But I'm okay with that because I've been wearing contacts since I was four years old, honestly. I've had, I might, without, my, without my contacts in, I'm 2,200 or 2,400, I'm sorry. I'm legally blind without my contacts in. And even with them in, if you see a black SUV driving your way, go wide. <laughs> and and if, you wave, if you wave and I don't wave back, it's not because I'm a dick. I just, I'm blind. I just didn't see you. I'm lucky just to keep it between the lines. So those things, I'm not, you know, at the time when you go through these life issues, everyone in this room has something. We all have some kind of baggage. You might have divorce, bankruptcy, something you've gone through. And you're dealing with those pains. But listen, man, we are all people, human beings. And if there's one thing that I believe I've been charged with in life from God was to use the stand, the, the, the restaurants were kind of this, the vehicle to allow me to, I mean, obviously, i got to serve good stuff to get you to come in, but if I can do that right, which we do most of the time, then I can use that vehicle to, to preach good stuff. And that's kind of why I like doing this stuff, because I feel like that is an opportunity for me to tell people that there are, I'm, I can give you all a big hug, a big air hug right now. You don't want to touch me, because you don't want this shit virus. <laughs> but I'm just here to tell you that I, I wanted, I ripped the curtain away, because I want you to know, sometimes we we see people and we, when we, and we assume that they have been given everything in life and they, w and they walk on this path that is just laced with roses and gold. And that's not how it is. For most everybody in the world, that's not how it is, including me. We all have our things. 
And I think it's okay to have those things because what this, this stuff did for me, so the, the health stuff has made me a crazy fanatic about my body. I always have to work out every day. Even like a day like today, I was mad that I couldn't go to the gym even while I'm puking, which is, yeah, it's crazy, but that's, that's what anorexia does to you. It doesn't ever go away. It sits back in the back of your mind. But I've done things for my company. So we do fit challenges. We do Biggest Loser. We do all these. Um, I, I, I get a gym membership to everybody in the company that wants to go work out. So it's, in my opinion, what it did was it allowed me to make my company better by letting people know how important exercise is. I don't go and tell them, hey, be anorexic, and this is a way to lose weight. I tell them that there's a better way to lose weight. The retina detachment allowed me to... Uh, I had to let go. I signed all of our payroll checks. I signed all the checks every day for every, every, all of our companies. Well, for 15 days, the company either was going to keep moving forward or was going to stop. And guess what, Scott? The world doesn't stop spinning when you're not, just because you name everything after you because you're so pompous, <laughs> the world will keep spinning. And it did, and my company kept moving forward. So it was a great thing for me to allow, to, to allow me to let go. So my challenge to you as we leave here today, and as I have wrap up my 10 seconds left, is I've given you all a card. And in that, what I want you to do with that card is give yourself a, your own personal challenge. I want you to write down a challenge. You can do it now or you can do it tonight. And seal it up in that card and keep that on your vanity. And I want you to take, that van I want you to take it and open it 30 days from now and see if you've accomplished what you set out to accomplish. Because we can all be better people, and I want you to take my challenge seriously. Thank you for having me.